This is The Same Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's, tonight, edition of The Pit Stop. We're here to talk about our favorite sport, hobby, common interest, that being sim racing. Uh, so why am I confused about what time it is or where we are? Uh, a couple of things. Number one, it is Thursday night that I am filming this. So some of the news uh, that would normally come out Friday morning, I'm not here Friday morning doing this show. I'm actually at Button Willow testing the Chotis. We're doing a preseason shakedown on the, on the car. So uh, I got the call this week and needed to fill in and help out the guys and do some laps and uh, be there to help work on the car as well. So I could not be here for the Friday morning show, which is really unfortunate because today's show was actually going to be the beginning of the Back to Live edition of the Pit Stop. So although this is airing at 9 for the last few months, we've been doing this show at 9 o'clock on a pre-recorded version without the interactivity of the community involved. And this is probably a, a overreaction to other things that we have been doing. But we've been making some changes here at the Sim Pit. I don't know if you'd noticed, but we have more and more videos coming out and a little bit less live content. We're gonna start bringing more live content back into the action now that we have some good balance here. Starting with, next Friday's Pit Stop 9 a.m. will be live. It will be filmed live. I'll be dealing with and talking to you guys, uh, taking your comments So when we have cool topics that deserve attention. It's something that we can talk about. We might start cutting some of the less important stories and focusing on the more important things, but we'll make those adjustments over time. Anyway, so that is the heads up on what's going on. That is the announcement of why I'm not here uh, this morning watching with you. It is why uh, we are not kicking off the live show this week, but we will start next week. So we've taken care of all our announcements. So what is going on in sim racing? Uh, starting off, with Vicente Salas is his name. And he's actually from Temecula. So that's not too far for me. He's almost like a hometown uh, hero for me. Uh, Vicente Salas leads every lap in a dominant e-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series win at Richmond. So congratulations to him and that 55. Uh, the name of his team, actually, we're going to play a clip here. We'll hear the name of his Space Force. Uh, Vicente Salas wins the race. And Garrett Ma Manis in second, and Ryan Lusa in third. Looking at the overall points, uh, let's see, the grid, let's see, there's the grid. So things are really starting to shape up uh, team points. So the E NASCAR Coca Cola iRacing Series playoff grid, we're not even looking at points anymore, we're looking at the grid. Uh, Leahy's in, Clampett's in, Lusa's in, Conti's in, Salas is in with that win, Bob Bryant is in. Leading in the points, so pending, um, I'm not sh sure how many races they have. Michael Guest, Wilson, Stephen Wilson, Bobby Zelensky, and Nick Ottinger. So a few guys, I think that, I'm not sure, let's see, do we know? Uh, continues at Kansas uh, on the 27th, where Ottinger won, by the way. And uh, I don't see how many races left in the season. So, uh, but if they're down to that, uh, instead of giving us points, giving us the who's in, it shows you how close to the end of the season we really are. Uh, on the road side of thing, Josh Rogers returns to the Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup Winner's Circle in Le Mans. Excuse me. That, excuse me. Beautiful VRS Porsche. And look at that tight racing. That's a beautiful shot. Look at that. That's awesome. At Le Mans, of course. Uh, we'll get the rundown. Josh Rogers over Tommy Oscar with Zach Campbell finishing in third. And the points are as follows. Josh Rogers, Mitchell DeJong, and Sebastian Job are our top three in the best of the best. Road racing on iRacing. Uh, I mentioned uh, his team and that we would hear the name of the team. This is the reaction to winning. Space Station Gaming is the name of the Salas. In just Salas. his sixth career start, Vincente Salas going to come off of the final corner. The first win for Space Station Gaming and his first career Coke Series win. Vincente Salas, your winner at Richmond. And it gets him into the shootout. you got to love it. I wish we had the audio on him. <laughs> a little Not excited. Not many drivers, me? Tim, Good can see that they won a race. All right. Uh, switching over, I think that's all we had. A lot of congratulatory things. Uh, NASCAR Hall of Fame have two new wrapped NASCAR simulators at the Hall of Fame. I've been there and uh, played with those things. And I think that's it. 
Uh, Seto Corsa, uh, just congratulating some winners. Again, when I see the big names in the esports, I'm going to keep telling you so you can know who the big names in our sport are. The GT4 winner uh, was Jack McIntyre of Zancho Rocket Simsport. This is round four Silverstone in the Aceto Corsa GT4 championship. R Factor with another competition system blog, week number 14 this time around, bunch of Q&A. And I, I was thinking if you ever wanted to get in on the Q&A, you, maybe you had a question about what's going on with the development of the competition system. And they seem to be really good about answering questions because, look, every week we get another blog with all sorts of, of answers to the questions the community has. Anyway, via their Twitter pages, we're going to find that. So here on the 12th, uh, today is the 15th, tomorrow you're watching this, it's the 16th. But back on the 12th, if you have questions, we have answer, answers. The next R Factor 2 competition system blog will publish this Wednesday. Make sure to submit your questions for Marcel, for Marcel on the link below. And there's the link. Uh, and then on the 14th are the answers to those very questions. So our guys have been playing more and more R Factor 2. But if you had questions and you wanted to get it, that's how. Our factor also had an update, so a minor release candidate update has been deployed. Uh, sporadic freeze the UI in full screen mode. Nothing big, just a little update. And then they had an update, a hot fix to the update. And then they had another hot fix, uh, didn't they? Nope, just one hot fix. Okay, and a hot fix to the update. So a little bit of update going on there as well. This coming out to us from F1 2021. This was officially our screenshot of the day i think i was influenced by the word officially not officially that was our screenshot of the day if you remember uh the new f1 car so here we are feel the rush and live the drama live the drama in f1 2021 a next gen experience from codemasters pre-order digital deluxe edition today for three days early access <laughs> And exclusive content, including seven classic My Team drivers. Oh, I just, the early access one is. So here is their announcement trailer. Play a little on the. Oh, we'll let this. He tried to stop them from signing you. Anything for a star driver. This is a good time to mention that I have a link. To everything that I talk about in the description of the show. So if you want to watch the trailer, um, there are plenty of places to find it, but this is the direct link to the Codemasters page where you can watch the video and listen to all the audio. They call us Breaking I'm Point. Sorry for you, mate. You never stood a chance with him. So yeah, this is the big build-up to F1, the next gen, the, the, the ultimate. We do not have, uh, there is no sim that can parallel the Madden-esque ability to create one title every year. Uh, this is the Madden football of sim racing. And that is a, a, a tremendous achievement if you really think about it. <laughs> if you really think about it. Anyway, good for them. Uh and so then we have some screenshots of the cars that are within the game. The models look great. F1 cars look kind of funny to me with that jacked up rear end. I'm not knocking the halo. It's it's essential, but it looks interesting on the car. You got the car so low and then these weird super strong lines. Anyway, uh, modern F1 cars are a trip, that's for sure. So, F1 2021 on the horizon. Oh, I didn't give you a date. July 16th. Friday, July 16th. I believe that's going to... Is that going to be early access? Or is that going to be regular? It doesn't say definitively there. Uh, Forza. Forza Street, to be more specific. They now have the Aston Martin series available in Forza Street as of now. Yeah, that would be a cool screenshot. Eh, that looks very cartoony. Uh, here's another. Aston Martin makes its debut. That looks more closer to game than that rendering. Anyway. Okay, so Forza Street getting an upgrade. Gran Turismo. Who's pumped? I love this trophy, by the way. Who's pumped for the start of the FIA GTC 2021 Nations Cup GT Sport? Uh, in addition to that, of course, we have the Manufacturing Series.
WRC9, no, WRC10. Be part of history and watch the world premiere trailer of WRC10 tomorrow at 3 p.m. This is back on the 12th, so the trailer has happened. Um, also, WRC9 is going to be available on Steam as of September 16th. That's new. Ready for day two of Nacon Ram and watch the world premiere trailer. Yes, where is it? Where is it? Many of you have questions. So, again, what we are looking at, I'm looking for the trailer. Um, September 2nd. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. The game will be available on Steam September 2nd. Weird. So, WRC 9 is going... Am I reading this correctly or am I missing something? Uh, now, WRC 9 will be available on Steam September 16th. WRC 10. The game will be available on Steam September 2nd. You can already wishlist the game now. So if you go to Steam, you can actually add it to your wishlist and get ready to buy. Planned release September 2nd. Game plans to unlock in approximately four months. Uh, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the championship, WRC is offering a brand new anniversary edition packed with new content and sensations. Relive the most intense moments from the 1973 to today. WRC 10 Historic Mode puts your driving talents to the test through 19 historical events that require you to adapt to racing conditions of each time period. Uh, never before seen new content for new 2021 rallies. Estonia, Croatia, Belgium, and Spain. Six historic rallies. 120 spe special stages. 52 official teams. 20 legendary cars. Career mode. Anyway, uh, WRC 10, September 2nd, people. Uh, they have a few more posts talking about it here as well. Talking about historic, we gave you the numbers already. Uh, new cars, we talked about the new cars already. Physics, we didn't. Physics, which have already been praised in WRC 9, have been further improved to offer you even more realistic experience. Control of aerodynamic forces, the turbo, and braking have received particular attention on all surfaces. Uh, this is big. The hugely popular career mode has also been improved with a new livery editor and a chance to create your own team. You can now apply all your own colors to championship cars to complement the 52 official teams of the 2021 season. Um, that's all for now. In the coming weeks and months prior to launch, we will do our best to show you the expertise of Clayton Games and to present in-depth new content. So there you go. Big deal. Here's the trailer. Again, I'll have the link so you can watch it in full screen so that you can uh, listen to the audio because we're going to mute it here. And I suppose that's a big deal that's available on Steam or will be right out of the gate this time around. So... Awesome. Lots of new game release news. Gotta love that. Fanatec, uh, this came out last Friday right after our pit stop, but here's a sneak peek of the upcoming BMW Motorsport M4 GT3 steering wheel. What do you think? Isn't that a crushed carbon? I believe that's what they call it. Oh, I want to see, see. Look, somebody's done some total uh, label machine la stick. Look at it. That's like right out of my playbook there. And you can see they cut them by hand to, to fit traction. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's a pretty cool wheel rim. Please. No, that's just a visual. Okay. A uh, little guard on this middle button, a little guard here, or at least divider, making it real. This would be pretty easy in VR, by the way. Look at this. For VR, you would have six buttons within the range of your thumb, it looks like, and then a, t a twist rot rotary as well, and defining marks between the three. That's pretty badass for VR, I think. I think if I were going to VR all the time, I'd be pretty insistent that I used a butterfly. I call those butterfly. An open wheel style, a formula style rim. 
uh, just because of the buttons and, and not wanting to take a hand off as much. I think that's it. I think that's all we had from Fan. Oh, no, no, no. So, Fan so, you know, they're the big sponsor of the GT World Challenge in real life. So, check this out. This is the Fanatic Fanatec Arena with the Seto Corsa. It's going to have AC Esport, Sim Grid, Coach Dave Academy, Racing On, and powered by AWS. Bunch of Fanatec rigs. I haven't seen those in a long time. Obviously, this is a rendering of sorts. There it is being built, though. That's no rendering. That's for real. Um, so, yeah, this is the take a sneak peek at what's to come this weekend. Our Fanatic Esport Arena at the GT World Challenge Europe at Monza. Keep an eye out for more. So, that's what's going on. Um, oh, and then this. What's this? April 14th. Anyone? What is this? Now that looks like some kind of a button. I don't know. Wow. Wow. Cyborg. Cyborg. No, I don't know. What is this? What is this? Um, I think that's it. Lots from Fnatic, though. Good for them. Uh, that's my word of the day. Good for them. I uh, haven't heard anything out of pure rock crawling in forever. So apparently now, happy birthday, customization update. Not really a big deal. I'm just mentioning they had something going on. Very, very small, very insignificant update when you consider how much work it needs. Uh, a sim that does not need a lot of work but is continuing to get it is uh, Euro Truck or American Truck. In this case, it's American Truck. And they are doing a little preview of Wyoming, the next or one of the next or one of many next DLC or expansions for American Truck Wyoming Railroads. So a bunch of shots here, and this is something else that you can put on your wish list on Steam. Do we have a date? I know it's on the wish list. Coming soon is all we know. We don't have the exact date, but they are really trucking along. <laughs> Get it? See how I did that? Trucking along some updates for ATS and ETS. All right, let's see. Check this out. This dude made virtual reality gloves. He 3D printed them, and he's selling these things for $22. Ready player one, here we come. Being able to just put on a pair of gloves. Oh, the, yeah, you see the IO 101? The, uh, every I can't remember what they call those guys. This isn't just something out of Ready Player One either. Yeah, companies that he referenced it. Technology. The problem is all the existing haptic gloves out there are inaccessible to most people right now because they're super expensive and they're only being sold to professionals. So I know so a lot of you guys do your own 3D printing love projects. Maybe you can use this as inspiration. I'm Maybe it'd be worth it for you to get I really some twenty-two dollar so virtual gloves. But congratulations, VR this kid! This is just a fun project for me to work on by myself. But now it's become a mission for me to help make VR haptic gloves affordable for the average consumer. Distance based on how far it's turned, and that's something we can measure with some electricity. Self. After we both had our drivers working, we decided to merge our projects into an open source VR glove driver that anyone can use for a DIY VR glove. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Uh, I was just having a conversation with uh, Mark Michkowski about VR. And, you know, I, I, and I'm still waiting on VR to get where I want it to be. And one of the reasons I'm so excited about VR is in really a Ready Player One mindset. Uh, these gloves, this is an essential part of the future of gaming to me. You know, maybe not so critical for sim racing immediately, but when that becomes the everyday way of gaming, it'll just get integrated into sim racing, of course. So anyway, you can check that out again. I have the link to everything here. So let's check out some rigs, talk about some sim pit racing, and then bring this show to a close so I can get some sleep and head out to the track. So let's see. This is a 3D printed wheel. This was posted by Bregfer. Bregfer, his new 3D printed NSX GT3 replica wheel. Obviously Honda NSX. I like the way that looks. He, if he is this, oh, did he print the whole thing? If he did those grips, I'm impressed because I've tried that and I couldn't make it look quite that nice. And also, I think that carbon fiber is really nice. Is that? A wrap on his 3d printing anyway i am really impressed because i couldn't make one look nearly that nice when i tried but i'm going to give it another go 
We have another plan coming up fairly soon on that topic. This one was posted by Grapple Shot, and this just, I loved it. Anyone else got a son like this? He wanted realism. So it's like soapbox derby sim rig. You can just throw some wheels on that and bomb it down a hill in a soapbox derby contest. Uh, the other thing that I loved and noted right away was the fan. And, and you know, what, what's with the headphones up <coughs> over the helmet? That, okay, that makes me laugh. This one, another great, I, you know, I, I do these sometimes just for you guys to get ideas for your rig. Maybe you've had a problem where, you know, your significant other complained about noise and maybe that noise was your butt kicker vibration or something. Anyway, Mask Driver posted this. Simple noise reduction system for a sim racing cockpit. Balloon disc system. Now, I have no idea what a balloon disc system is. I mean, it looks like some kind of inflatable apparatus. If you know what it is, please, please type it into chat so people can know what a balloon disc system is. And then finally, this one I just couldn't leave alone. Uh, oh man, this is like the guy, his bedroom in the basement, probably living with mom still. I hope I don't read too much into this. I'm just looking at things like the, it looks like there's a bed on the ground there. I got, anyway, uh, finally added a rear seat frame and his RS6 to his GT Omega Apex wheel stand. What a difference. Deeper into the sim, excuse me, rabbit hole he goes. But well, you know he's certain old school because he's a Bill Elliott fan and Jeff Gordon, and those are like names from the past, right? Anyway, uh, this was posted by B2Rad. Congratulations on the upgrade. You're getting there. Deeper into the hole is right. And this one I just like too. I, sometimes I'm just impressed with people do a space and the rooms. You know, we get a little glimpse into our, our fellow hobbyists' lives and rooms. This guy, I know he's a dad. And if you guys, I'll, I'll tell you why he's a dad. You figure it out while I read the post by Kane's Fins. Finished his rig today, but what really is finished in the sim racing world? What, But what is really finished in the sim racing world? Great question. There's always more you can do. A long way from a desk mounted T-150 a year ago. Indeed. Indeed he is. He's got the CSL Elite Base. Nice looking new Ferrari, uh, not Ferrari, uh, Porsche rim and uh yeah you can see the the kid art i believe that's uh that's some kid art there like refrigerator art back in my day but there you go on the sim racing wall gotta love it and then finally last one this was just impressive couldn't leave it alone for that reason alone uh no actually the reason i like this was this was almost a harry potter scenario harry potter you know where you build the rig under the stairs him, his sim racing space behind his closet, he thinks he's done upgrading for now. That's like the theme of the day, isn't it? Uh, gotta love the under lighting. Well done adding the under lighting to your rig. That's clean. That's nice. Um, looks like this is his own custom P1 copy of sorts. No, that looks like a P1 plate there. It's a P1 and silver is what it is. Butt kicker mounted on there. Nice, nice looking rig. That's that's a nice looking rig right there. All right, uh, let's see. Last thing to talk about. Welcome to Sim Racing GP. So Sim Racing GP is a matchmaking surface. Uh, um, I always talk about with some of the sims that aren't i racing you know um you know r factor a set of course uh you got a great sim now what do i do with it like how do i race with others best how do i get a league environment without like having to go search out some obscure league uh sim racing G gp to the rescue uh they have gone from beta to open we have been racing on sim racing gp we've done some assetto corsa competizione We've done some Assetto Corsa, and we've done some Race Room, and we're going to be doing the Sim Pit 
Uh, the Sim Pit Patron Race will be on Race Room this coming Saturday, utilizing Sim Racing GP. Anyway, we've been able to use it behind the scenes for our patron group only, and at this point, anyone and everyone can get involved and uh, get into some racing, including racing with us and some of our, our stuff going on. So congratulations for, to them on going public, so to speak, or coming out of beta form. All right, let's talk some some Sim Pit winners and bring this show to a close. Starting with Terry Crouch wins the season opener at Lime Rock Park. This was last Sunday. It was an intense race because Lime Rock is always intense. But Terry Crouch really put on a show and brought home the victory over Gonzalo Perone, defending champion with Randall White in third. So uh, that was the first race of the season in the GT3 League, so obviously that is the order in the uh, standings, Crouch, Perone, and White. And that group, including me, our group will be going to Hockenheim Ring this Sunday, and I will be streaming Sunday's race um, at Simpit Live on Twitch. And then on the Oval side of things, Last night, they had their third race of the season. Actually, that was just tonight was the third race of the season. And Mark Michkowski won last week. And congratulations, Mark, because I don't think I, I mentioned that last week. But he also won tonight at Martinsville, or if you're watching this yesterday. Top three at that race was Mark Michkowski, David Clymer, and Nick Boyd. Talk about a who's who at the podium there. That was the third race of the season, and now after three, David Clymer leads the way. Mark Michkowski in second, and Joe Hiltinger in third place. So that does do it for today's show. One more time, I will remind you, next Friday, 9 a.m., right here on YouTube, it will be the Sim Pit Pit Stop Live. And we only do our Friday show now. We're going to start narrowing it down to the most important topics, and I'm going to want your input live during the show. We're going to get back to that, and I hope I hope you are as excited about that as I am. That comes from feedback from a lot of uh, people have uh, sent me various messages saying, you know, you need to go back to the live pit stop. So I listen. You send me uh, uh, ideas on what we can do more, and I always listen. So in this case, we get to put it to use, and that starts next Friday. So anyway, get out there, do some racing, have yourselves a great weekend, and I'll see you live on Friday. This is The Sip It. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.